We're finally into that good stretch here where the water temps are down in that mid 60 range and our fish are doing a lot of different things. You know, sometimes they're deep, sometimes they're shallow. Right now we have them everywhere from a foot to 20 plus feet. And the main factor in that is our bluegills and bait fish, when you scan, they're all over the board. You see clouds of stuff shallow and deep and that's why the fish are wherever those are. I got two different ways I'm fishing this jig today. 20 pound floral on a three quarter ounce for the deeper rocks and the stretches where there's not a lot of thick weed. I don't like it when it's hung up trying to snap it free. Got a little too much stretch and give there where you can't really get it to do what you want. The heavier stretches or clumps, I have braid on in that same size of jig. And I got a little different head style. This all-terrain grass master likes to go through that coontail and cabbage really, really good when you're not messing around with it too much. So two different ways to rig the same type of lure. Let's go out here and see what happens. There, I'll pick up that jig. You saw that I did a quick hop. I put some of my own action into it. And that absolutely triggered that fish. It feels like a dandy fish. It doesn't want to come up at all. Pulling a little drag. Real nice one. Oh, what a way to start. So Cast in about 16 feet of water. We're not quite up to the weeds yet. A little bit of rock, mainly gravel. Three quarter ounce AT jig, black and blue. Gets me down there, bottom contact. I gave it that quick hop and then right after that he was swimming off with it. Beautiful fish to start. Jig real hard off the bottom and the feet. And right as I twitched and get that hard snap, I felt the line just pop and the fish is drilled in. Oh, another beautiful fish. Oh. Two casts in a row, artificially giving my bait some action of its own. And the fish are just drilling that thing. So I've been using a three quarter ounce today. This is an all terrain AT jig. It's got the rough bottom rough for pulling over structure and feeling good. Nice solid hook, good weed guard. It's been my go to jig for years. I carry my skirts with so I can just quick make whatever color combo I want. I honestly could just make about a hundred Texas Cross and call it good. So far today I was using that black and blue. I'm going to switch it up a little bit here and put on this Texas Craw. Skirt's got spot for one rattle. Now I'm just going to hook this trailer on here. Usually I throw it up there, but right now I'm just going to hook it to the end there and let them pick that up. They're hitting it pretty good, so they shouldn't short strike it. 20 pound floral. I'm going to do a San Diego jam knot. Once you get the hang of this one, it's super easy. Some people do four twists, I do five most of the time. 
bring it down, put it through the loop, wet it down, it is done. It's that fast and easy of a knot. Put some good old smelly stuff on it. Spread the weed guard. And you are ready to go catch some fish. Is absolutely where it needs to be. It gets that sweet spot and lets you pop fish. Super efficient, super easy. <laughs> Another nice jig fish. Look at that! Holy smokes! 65 degree water, 18 and a half feet of water, rocks, a little bit of wood, a bunch of bluegills, crappies, and these fish are in here. Look at the size of that fish! <laughs> yes! You can see we're 18 feet of water where the boat's sitting. And there is some really nice rock right here and a big one right there. And you can see where I was casting out in front of the boat, dragging that right on there. If you were 10, 15, 20 feet off of here, it's bare nothing, both sides. That's the key right there. Every time you stand up and hook a fish, and then get ready to cast again in one glance and you know right where the juice is. Depth finders put us on the fish. There's no question about it. When you don't have very much time, when you can come out to a lake, pull up to it with a 360 and make all of your cast count for two hours, it's unbelievable if the fish are biting, how many fish you can put in the boat. Again, three quarter ounce all-terrain jig, the AT jig, Black and blue I started with. The Texas Craw was killing them at the end. Put a rattle on there. Put some scent on there. Not only does it cover up my smell, it also smells good to the fish. 20 pound fluorocarbon, San Diego jam knot. There's that finished jig I was using. All the damage today was that on that Arachi Atlas 7 foot 11 rod. Beautiful setup for throwing these big heavy jigs. Absolutely powerful enough to get those big fish in the boat. You saw me boat flipping everything. Abu Garcia STX reel. Pretty straightforward setup. Absolutely got the job done. And you saw there's a mixture of retrieves that were working. Um, the biggest fish, that one that was over five and a half pounds, hit it out in that deep water, 
I was watching my line go down, and right before it hit the bottom, I saw that line pop. It hit it, engulfed it. I set the hook, got him. A couple of those fish were dead sticking. I had a little bit of a backlash on that fluorocarbon, and after I got done smoothing out the line, I reeled up, and there was a fish on it. And then other ones were when I first felt the rocks, and I wasn't fishing big, thick patches, just little patches of rocks. I'd cast past it. And when that jig came and hit that first rock, and I felt it, I'd pop it. And when I popped it, a lot of times that fish must have been following it or sitting right there. And when it popped off that rock, they hit it instantly. Like it didn't even finish coming all the way up off of that pop and it was already pulling down on the rod. Big fish are going. These was these fish were out in like 18 to 22 feet of water. Awesome, awesome time fishing heavy jigs. Get on the water, use your electronics, find the cover. And the biggest key is find those sunfish and crappies and bait fish schools because you find where those are holding at, you're finding the big fish in the lake.